Those of you who have been watching the Georgia Georgia Tech game we welcome you we are just underway here Clemson's got the football after an interception and a tackle made back at midfield as South Carolina started the game out going for the bomb it was intercepted now a 29 yard run by James Davis has put Clemson in great field position but the defense responds there it'll be a loss of a yard and bring up a second down and 11. Both of these defenses know they've got to respond to the opposing running backs and shut down those running games if they're going to have any success here in this one. Those of you watching the Kansas State Fresno State game, we welcome you. 80,000 on hand for this great rivalry game. Comes in South Carolina. The carry is made by C.J. Spiller. Spiller, the sophomore out of Lake Butler, Florida. We'll hear a lot from Spiller and Davis in this game if this Clemson running game is on a gain of three yards. And this Clemson offense, we, we look at Steve Spurrier over there on the sidelines. I mean, he flat challenged, challenged this entire football team, Gary, but particularly his defense over the open date, particularly about effort or lack of effort. This is going to be a third down and six, 44% effective. Clemson in third down conversions this season. Harper the quarterback into the pocket at midfield over the middle and that will be enough for the first down. 34 yard line Tyler Grisham his 56th reception of the season a wide receiver on that right side. And Gary you see why Cullen Harper has been so successful in his first year as a starting quarterback. I mean he is fearless in that pocket. You also see him moving that right shoulder late in the Boston College game on a touchdown. He injured that shoulder. Looks like he's having some problems with that right now. 66 percent effective in the passing department for Harper. He's got Davis in the backfield with him on the flip. It'll be college left and college down. Great coverage as they strung that one out. Eric Norwood over to get it. Here is Access Hollywood's co-host and Clemson grad Nancy O'Dell who introduced the Tigers offense presented by XM. There has been a storm of brewing in the Tigers backfield this season by James run over you Davis and CJ you can't catch me Spiller better known as Thunder and Lightning. The tandem has amassed over 1500 yards this season. Now of course Thunder and Lightning wouldn't be possible without an offensive line that averages 6'5", 313 pounds. That's massive. Go Tigers. Beat those Gamecocks. A lot of pressure on Nancy O'Dell. <laughs> she introduced them last week against Boston College and didn't get the win. Uh, second down at 12 a completion to about the 29 yard line. It'll be well shy of the first down the South Carolina defense is Steve Spurrier 96 national championship winning coach Gamescock D. Starting a defensive end a big play guy Eric Norwood from Ackworth Georgia. Casper Brinkley from Thompson Georgia is an outside backer. Rodney Polk our inside backer from here in Columbia and in the secondary Emmanuel Cook number 21 from Palm Beach Gardens Park. And here's another big third down play third down and five Davis will be in the backfield three receivers with one in motion coming back the other way third down and five Clemson long count flags down a lot of movement. See whether or not Clemson got what they wanted. Gary, I think we're going to get a false start on the left offensive guard Chris snap. McDuffie false start 68 of the offense five yards. Third down. And this USC defense has really struggled the last two weeks on third down against Arkansas and Florida. 22 out of 29 conversions for the opponents, 76% on third down. We take a look at Tyrone Mix, the defensive coordinator. But here's a third and passing down. That was a big false start penalty. Should help this Gamecock defense. Colin Harper has got Davis and Spiller third down and 10 now with Clemson in South Carolina territory looking down the middle goes to the receiver at the 30 going backwards on this and nowhere near enough for the first down brought down at the 31 that is Spiller primary receivers covered so he dumped it off and Spiller couldn't free himself up. Yeah we go back again to that false start penalty good third down stop for a USC defense. Clemson now will get an opportunity at the field goal there as we said there's virtually no breeze down there at field level so you, nobody's kicking into or away from the wind and uh, it'll be a 48 yard attempt 
Mark Buckholz will do it. He's 17 for 27, his longest, 52 yards. He's got time. Good snap. It is up. It is long enough, and it is good. So they get the field goal after getting possession on the interception, but South Carolina defense at least won half of that battle. 3 0 Clemson. And this ESPN2 telecast available in astounding high definition on ESPN2 HD, presented by Pioneer Cool. Uh, great to have all of you with us. The discussion's well underway on both sides for coaches already, Coach. And you know what? This game really, when you look at statistically, turnovers, already South Carolina with a turnover. South Carolina comes in number 88 in the country. They've lost 25 turnovers. Clemson number two in the country. They've only lost 11. So the turnover bug continues to bite South Carolina. Uh, Colts who got the field goal gets the foot into that one. That'll be all the way back to the four yard line. Chris Calvo will bring it up to the 20. And there will be literally upended at about the 23 yard line. And uh, that was President Butler who put the hit on a 20 yard return. Let's take a look at our rivalry notebook presented by Sonic. Well, Clemson leading in this series. In fact, Clemson, 10% of all the wins they've ever had in their history have been against South Carolina. South Carolina won the last meeting, though, 31-28, third longest uninterrupted series in college football history. And it is a tremendous rivalry that gets absolutely soaked in here during the week before this game starts. South Carolina had the ball for 13 seconds the first time before the interception. Boyd on the carry. Look at him pound. He'll get up to about the 30-yard line. That is Corey Boyd as Ricky Sapp made the hit. Let's uh, take a look with Steve Spurrier, the 96 Heisman Trophy winner, breaking down his Gamecocks offense presented by XM. Starting at quarterbacks, the fifth-year senior from LaGrange, Georgia, Blake Mitchell. At wide receiver, number 11, Kenny McKinley from Atlanta. Corey Boyd's a starting tailback from Orange, New Jersey. And Webb Brown from Boonville, North Carolina, is our center. We'll bring up a second down and a four. Blake Mitchell, the quarterback, handoff, second man through. Boyd breaks away again. Boyd will be close to a first down. I'll tell you, he's got a big desire. Hamlin on the hit that time. Nancy O'Dell, 87 Smith, South Carolina, introduces the Tiger defense. The Death Valley defense starts with the front line. Defensive end Philip Merling is the spark and will be relentless in attacking the South Carolina backfield. In fact, he plans on spending so much time back there, he's offered to pay rent. What a great guy. Linebacker Nick Watkins is the defense's leading tackler. And the secondary features Michael Hamlin, who looks to add to his team leading interception total. How about them Tigers? Well, the Tigers right now trying to shut down Corey Boyd. There is a flag down on the play. They did pick up the first down. Boyd's going to get a lot of work in this game. He is a fifth year senior and he is having a career season in rushing. Yeah, Gary I, I think you hit the nail on the head. I mean Corey Boyd can be the difference in this football game for South Carolina particularly because they've struggled so much with pass protection. Penalty, still first down. The great story. We'll talk about him as we go along. He also acts as a receiver out of the backfield. He's got 35 receptions this season. Uh, he averages about 75 yards a game. He's the leader in the rushing department, and he's had nine rushing TDs for South Carolina. It's going to be a first down and 20 now after the penalty gets marked off. Boyd will be the lone setback. Boyd coming straight up the middle. Well, that, he had his head turned around. No flag, though, so apparently. <laughs> And uh, did not pick up the face mask, and he'll be down at about the 24 yard line. And to allow Corey Boyd to be a factor in this game, number one, South Carolina can't get behind early like they did against Florida two weeks ago. Second, they can't have those big penalties where you get out of rhythm and have to run the ball on first down and 20. There is Boyd, and you already see how much they intend to use him. It is a second down and 19. Boyd's had 161 court carries. Davis 113 coming into this game, and they are the carriers. This is out of the gun. Looking down the sideline, it is going to be incomplete, shy of the 30-yard line. A little cut-across pattern from that far side will go incomplete by Blake Mitchell. 
You talk about this rivalry game, and it is a huge rivalry. But Clemson in the ACC, obviously South Carolina in the SEC, and not one common opponent that these two teams have played. And that's really amazing when you think about they're only a couple hours apart. And that is why this rivalry has been so sustained because they are geographically that close. A third down and 19. Davis comes into the backfield now. They've got four receivers. Little dump pass on the far side will be taken shy of the first down. We're about to 29. That is uh, Kenny McKinley on the reception. His 31st start. Nick Watkins, the leading tackler for Clemson, moved in and put the shot on. You'll hear a lot from McKinley in the receiving end of it. Well, that's going to bring up a fourth down, so they could not convert South Carolina on the season. 35% in converting third downs, and they don't get one there. Spiller is back for Clemson. Ryan Suckup will do the kicking, averaging uh, almost 42 yards per kick. He is ranked fifth in the SEC, and that one, he is blocked. And he picked it up, lost it at the 10, into the end zone. The specialty teams come to play. LaDante Harris picks up the football and takes it in a five yard return for the TD. And I mean, he had no chance to get that kick off. Yeah, Nelson Farber, I think it's up here, am I right? <laughs> no, he's actually on the other side. Nelson Farber is going to come from the outside who is a wide receiver and comes underneath and the same thing happened against Florida Gary two weeks ago Florida blocked the first punt of the game Mike Davis the slot just whiffed them on that inside move Buck Holtz puts up the extra point and Clemson after getting an interception brought it back for a field goal the first time this time the block kick is picked up and taken in for a five yard TD 10 nothing. And in the capital here in Columbia which right now is pretty quiet because Clemson has jumped out to a 10 nothing lead officially they've given that as a 10 yard return on the block punt pickup for the TD by Harris and it's amazing how this game has started almost exactly like the Florida game two weeks ago South Carolina fumbled the first snap from center turned the ball over then had a punt block on the second series tonight South Carolina throws an interception on the first play and has a punt blocked on the second series Buckholz has been busy here in the first quarter Culliver will take that one back at the four yard line and gets tripped up at the 25 yard line and we're going to check in with Stan Barrett Stan all right Gary update from Florida State and Florida Tim Tebow with a pair of rushing touchdowns and a pair of passing touchdowns in this game. He's got 22 rushing touchdowns now in the season. That ties the NCAA record for quarterbacks. The Gators up on the knoll. Well, the number's actually holding up in that game. <laughs> what a surprise. <laughs> there haven't been many of them, as college football fans know. First down and 10. South Carolina's got to get this offense going now. Corey Boyd in the backfield. Blake Mitchell. Looking over the middle, has time, puts a perfect pass on to the 35 yard line. So he had to go right between defenders on that one to Boyd. And Gary, this week, Steve Spurrier come out and questioned the effort of his football team. And I want you to watch Mike Davis right here get beat to the inside. But more important, a lack of effort. I mean, I hate to say that and call a guy out on national television, but that was a lack of effort by Mike Davis right there. Second down and a two after the eight yard gain. Boy, to be the second man in the backfield. He'll get the first down and he will be upended at about the 38 yard line. Ricky Sapp came in to get him. This is what Steve Spurrier said this week. You don't see coaches very often be this blunt. Need to change our habits. That's my responsibility. We put guys on the field that don't play with effort, don't play their assignment, they loaf. And that's embarrassing, and I'm going to quit putting them out there. Yeah, and Mike Davis, a guy that's played a lot of football here, been a good, productive player from right here in Columbia. And the same thing happened 
from the same guy on the block punt last week two weeks ago against Florida. They did get the first down first down at 10 Mitchell back again opened on the near side 45 and up to midfield before driven out of bounds that is Leonard Stafford former walk on out of the backfield let's check in with Stacy again. Well Gary and Bob the lack of effort and intensity has not gone unnoticed by some of these South Carolina players and just after the initial interception to start the game tight end Andy Boyd went up to each and every offensive lineman and looked at them very adamantly saying we need more intensity. He had a very stern look on his face guys. They're going to have to change something here early. Andy Boyd is the tight end. Corey Boyd who wears number three is in the backfield carrying the football to midfield and uh, may have gotten a yard on that and there he will be brought down as the linebackers moved in. You know and if there's any positive to it Florida was up 14 nothing very similar to this and South Carolina came roaring back to make it 14 14. But one thing about Steve Spurrier Gary and we talked about he's not going to sugarcoat it. if no. he believes something he's going to say it there's not many coaches around the country that will flat call guys out on effort Well, he did that it is a second down and a nine they go out of the gun Boyd and Stafford are both in the backfield hauls that snap in over the middle that's complete flags go down in the backfield very close to the first down marker to Kenny McKinley McKinley on the reception. It'll be brought back. They're going to be called on the hold. So just as South Carolina starts to get the offense going close to another first down this will come back. Holding 75 of the offense 10 yard penalty still second down. One thing about this Clemson defensive front you know they have had nine sacks the last two weeks. I mean they are an athletic big physical front. And right now I mean you can see the South Carolina offensive line struggling but the bigger problem is you take Corey Boyd out of the game from the run game aspect if you're South Carolina because you're just so far behind down in distance wise. Blake Mitchell is not a running quarterback. He can put the football up in the air. If anybody's going to run with it it will have to be Boyd out of the backfield. Stafford and Boyd are both back there now on the second down long yardage. Rush put on in the flats open 45 50 lot of room. Sideline and out of bounds. Corey Boyd. We told you he can receive as well as run. Chris Clemens came over to get him out of there. His 36th reception and a 39 yard gain. And you mentioned earlier, Corey Boyd is also a receiver. That's why he's going to be an excellent NFL prospect. But he gets an excellent block from the true freshman wide receiver, Dion LaCorn, down the football. That was huge right there for South Carolina. Big plays coach makes such a difference in a football game and there is one of them for South Carolina after getting backed up on that penalty Davis in the backfield first down at 10 like Mitchell hands off to him and stuck right there at the 20 yard line and a one on one tackle good play by Cavell Connor who came in uh, from the linebacker position he had a one on one and he nailed him Connor not a starter coming off the bench here sophomore out of Richmond Virginia. Mike Davis in the game you know they've got a tandem tailback situation here as well with Corey Boyd and Mike Davis I mentioned earlier he's from Columbia had knee surgery in the spring Mike Davis second down and eight Davis uh, stays in there as the lone setback couple of tight ends looking into the end zone no that'll be incomplete up inside the 10 yard line looking for Jared Cook who is the tight end on that far side. South Carolina trying to get these tight ends involved and Cook will be out there a lot especially in these close situations when they get down towards the goal line. Yeah, These tight ends are big good looking athletes. You look at Jared Cook. They say he runs Gary under four five. He's caught 13 passes in the last three games. He's going to be a big time player here for South Carolina. Another big play. Mitchell's gone four for seven 61 yards and one interception. The third down will have Stafford and Davis in the backfield is a third down and eight from the 21 yard line looking at a little rush puts it into the corner it is caught touchdown what a beautiful pass to Kenny McKinley his eighth 
touchdown reception, 19 yards on a third and eight. And I'll tell you what, Gary, Blake Mitchell had some pressure, and he stood in there first. Let's look at the protection. Mike Davis steps up right there and gets a good block. And here is a great throw on this corner route. I mean, Clemson's playing outside technique in good leverage, but the defensive back number two, DeAndre McDaniel, looked back to the football and lost sight of Kenny McKinley. Ryan Sucka puts it up through. That's been the story for him this year. 36 out of 36 in point afters. And uh, McKinley, who is going for a record that Shannon Sharp holds, single season reception record, has added to it and is getting closer. 10-7. Blake Mitchell on that drive went four for five, 76 yards in the air. Two big plays, the 39 yarder to Corey Boyd on the big yardage game for the first down, and then to McKinley in the 19 yard touchdown pass. Well executed drive with a couple of very big plays. Well, Kenny McKinley has just been a dependable wide receiver all throughout his career, a high school quarterback. 30 career starts for this guy. He's a heck of a player. He is four reception shy of that record held by Shannon Sharp with a couple already in this game. Buckholz has had the 48 yard field goal. Harris the 10 yard block punt return but answered on that touchdown drive by South Carolina. Now the kickoff by Suckup will come down near the goal line. In fact, a couple of yards in, Spiller decides to bring it out. Spiller's got a big gap over there and turned into the tackle at the 15-yard line. Good play and another one-on-one -on -one hit. Let's go to Stan Verrett, Sports Center in-game update. All right, Gary. This Taco Bell Studio update comes to us from Seattle, the Apple Cup, 100th meeting between Washington and Washington State. This is the opening kickoff. And Lewis Rankin is taking it the distance. 89 yards for the touchdown. The Huskies have won seven of nine against the Cougars, and they have a 10-0 lead right now. That will keep us updated on games continuing here in this holiday weekend. Hampton, by the way, made that great hit. And that one-on-one -on -one ball at the 15-yard line. Clemson first and 10. Spiller in the backfield. Call it Harper in the handoff. And it'll be for maybe a couple of yards on the game as Cody Wells moved in and put the hit on a lot of great rivalries of course being played some finished with that Georgia win you got Oklahoma with their big victory great game BYU of a Utah today other games that are still going on Florida really rocking Florida State Alabama Auburn that great meeting coming up all part of uh, the rivalries of college football that get played out for these two teams the last game of the regular season a second down and seven for Clemson Cullen Harper with three receivers to the near side nobody in the backfield sets up that little flat pass to the 23 yard line Tyler Grisham wide receiver coming back to get it. Well, that was a great effort by number 45, Rodney Polk, the linebacker. Just great closing speed out there in the open field. This Clemson offense, some balance to it as they are 61st in the rushing department, 38th in passing. They put up a lot of points this season, 35 per game, 20th in the ranking among 119 schools in the division. Third down, this is going to be a big play short yardage Davis in the backfield way back a good five yard charge and he gets the football and he will get the first down up to the 26 yard line before Polk again could move in and put the hit on and you see James Davis I mean he is a north south straight line runner and this week he was disappointed you know I don't blame him he had 12 carries last week for only 10 yards against Boston College he went into Rob Spence the offensive coordinator and says listen you need to get the ball in your best players hands and I'm one of your best players give me the ball. He is their leading ground gainer 168 carries for him coming in Spiller with 121 and very few others touch the football that is right in the middle and nowhere to go going to be a loss of a yard on that one. And we talked about ideally Clemson would like to come in here and run the football against South Carolina's defense because South Carolina has struggled. But Gary, look at the productivity over the last five games and how that productivity's diminished. 
but you can tell tonight they want to run the football. It's an amazing decline, isn't it? It and, really uh, is. It has been steady. Especially with the two running backs, Davis and Spiller. Yeah. There's a lot of talent on this football team. Loss of two in the last carry, second down and 12 out of the gun. They'll run the reverse near side. A lot of blockers out in front, 30, and out of bounds at about the 34 yard line. That is Spiller on the carry. Averages uh, about 4.7 per carry and 52 yards a game in the rushing department. And you see how Spiller, they use him a little bit more like a wide receiver out in space, bringing him on the reverse that time. So Clemson and South Carolina have completed the first quarter. Clemson got the 10 0 lead in the game. South Carolina answered. It is 10 7 at the end of the first. With Bob Davy and Stacey Dales, I'm Gary Thorne. A great to have you with us here at the home of the Gamecocks. Where right now, Clemson's got the 10 7 lead. Second quarter, Spiller will be in the backfield on this third down and short yardage. Third and short. And looking to pass on it. Rolling out, Spiller's got it, and he'll be taken out of bounds up to the 40 yard line. More than he needed for the first down. Well, Spiller acts as a receiver. That is going to be the 29th reception he has had this year. Now we talked about Spiller. They use him a lot more like a wide receiver. You're going to see him lined up in the backfield right here, and he's just going to beat number 21, Emmanuel Cook, to the flat. Hampton has gone five for just five. Harper runs him right there. Yeah. Five for five and 30 yards so far in the air. Spiller in the backfield again. They reverse it. Grisham, wide receiver, trying to put the ball up in front of him, will not get it to the 45 yard line. <laughs> I'll tell you what, is college football gone crazy or what? Check I mean, the scores. Just the, check the scores. I mean, the life expectancy for defensive coordinators anymore. I mean, you have scoring offense up. Total offense up and passing offense at an all time high in the history of college football as we look at Tyrone Nix, who has been under the gun here at South Carolina. So much so that Steve Spurrier, coach, actually got involved in the defense exactly. this last couple of weeks as they had a week off. But he went down there and took a look at all the stuff offenses are running. <laughs> he went right back up to the offense area in the field and said, listen, you guys figure out how to stop that stuff. That's a first okay. down on a second and six, and that is Spiller again on the carry. Rodney Polk out of the linebacker position moved in and put the hit on, and Clemson moving the football on the ground. These linebackers have got to get involved, Steve Spurrier said from Carolina. They've had to make a lot of tackles in the secondary. You don't want that happening, so he wants his linebackers and those up front linemen to be more involved. Well, run defense is always the number one priority, particularly when you coach defense for Steve Spurrier because he wants that ball back. He does not want that opponent taking that ball and controlling time of possession because he wants to call those plays on offense and he sees that clock winding down. Spillers on the left side as a receiver, a little comeback screen set up to the 40 yard line Grisham and there he will be taken down Tyler Grisham active in receiving Emmanuel Cook their best tackler moved in from the strong safety spot. Well Gary he had a great block by Pilgrim the right guard just keep your eye on him the whole way as he pulls out here on this little screen pretty athletic move right there gets the linebacker number 45 Rodney Polk on the ground. That's pretty good move for a big man. Now. Harper's seven for seven now as he's got that 66 completion rate during the season. A couple of tight ends here with Davis in the backfield on a second down and short yardage. And Davis will carry it for the first down and a little bit more as he'll take that one down to the 36 yard line. You know we talked about South Carolina's defense but now they've had some challenges when you look at three weeks ago Darren McFadden two weeks ago Tim Tebow and they haven't had much success but no one's had a lot of success you watched LSU yesterday try to defend Darren McFadden Florida State tonight trying to defend Tim Tebow I mean that's pretty good schedule very good back to back weeks now it is going to be a first down and 10 Clemson on the move Davis again will be in the backfield they fake to him big rush from behind got hit ball on the ground and the Gamecocks are Clemson it is Clemson 
He did not see that one coming and Harper got leveled from behind and those are the kind of hits you really feel because you're not prepared. Watch Emmanuel Cook. He's going to the big left tackle Barry Richards. I mean, you're seeing Man Emmanuel Cook come into the screen right there and just runs around. But kind of the story of the year for this USC defense has been their inability, Gary, to recover fumbles. As crazy as that sounds, but they have not been able to get the football when it's on the ground. This is going to bring up a second down. A second down after a loss of seven on that play. Looking to the end zone on the fly. It's almost intercepted down at the 10 yard line. It will be incomplete. There was double coverage as Stoney Woodson, who has come in to make a start, got there on Grisham again. Harper, as coach noted earlier, with that shoulder that he injured last week, seems bothered by it. And an illegal receiver downfield. We have an ineligible receiver downfield on the offense. Number five was covered up, went downfield. That penalty is refused. Third down. Gary, you mentioned we did the Boston College Clemson game last week, and Cullen Harper went up over the top. Here's the play on the touchdown, but he came down on that right shoulder. You could tell right there, I mean, that shocked him. And I agree with you. I think that shoulder's bothering him a little bit. This is a tough guy. I mean, his dad was an offensive lineman at Georgia on the national championship team. He actually started out as an offensive lineman. But that shoulder seems to be bothering him just a little bit. Third and 17 over the middle, incomplete. Wide open at the 35-yard line was Rendrick Taylor. But he could not pull it in. He would have to have run another 10 yards to get the first down. They do not get it. And it'll bring up a punting situation. So it will be Jimmy Maynard's who will come in to do the kicking. He is averaging about 43 yards a kick. Kevin McKinley will be back. McKinley is dangerous. He gets uh, his hands on the football in any kind of room. So a 13 play drive gets shut down with a big penalty included in it. Shanks that one to the near sideline and it will go out of bounds at about the well, we'll see where they spot it. The 20 yard line, I think. So decent field position after he tried to shorten that punt up to the near sideline. Only a 25 yard kick by Mainers. It is 10 7 Clemson. ESPN's College Football Primetime brought to you by Phillips Norelco. Phillips, sense and simplicity. And Prestone Antifreeze in the Yellow Jug. Prestone Protection. Easy to choose, easy to use. Some of the little battles are big ones, and then maybe you win the war. Well, for South Carolina, they've got to feel a little better about this. The last two games against Arkansas and Florida, they got destroyed in the first half defensively. Looking downfield, nobody there. Blake Mitchell now will go up to midfield. Double coverage. It is in complete. Going for the downs on that one. Kenny McKinley again the intended. Tell you what Gary great athletic move by Kenny McKinley going up and just getting that football out of there. And watch this I mean he's sandwiched and he goes up and really high pointed that football almost came down with a spectacular catch right there. Chris Chancellor one of those who got up there and helped defend. Coming into this game over the last two games in the first quarter, South Carolina had been outscored 58 to 17. Last two games, first half, 93 to 30. They've been outscored. Against Clemson, they're in the money. Second down and 10. Again, on the drop back, little draw play to the 23 yard line. Corey Boyd with a second and third effort. Won't be enough for a first down. Good gain. DeAndre McDaniel on the hit. Well, you see the effort of Corey Boyd. I mean, he is the heart and soul of this football team. He is a tough, tough football player, but threw a lot out of a tough area in New Jersey. It's a contract game for him. The it NFL is. is on his mind, and I think he will be an excellent NFL player, particularly here because he catches the football so well. He's had six carries for 25 yards, third down and three. 
another big third down play. Lake Mitchell back into the pocket, steps up. All alone, 35 yard line, battling, and will take it another seven or eight yards. What an effort. LaCorn, Dean LaCorn, his 23rd reception for 25 yards. And Dion LaCorn, a freshman wide receiver, a big, thick guy. But Chris Chancellor, the corner right here, poor, poor tackling him. He just gets thrown to the sideline. Then doesn't jump back and have much effort, Gary, getting back in the play right there. Boy, that was a great effort. Wow. Kept digging and got the first down, three out of four in third down conversions now. Stafford and Boyd are both in the backfield. First down and ten, just shy of midfield. Boyd on the carry straight ahead. We'll take it into Clemson territory. Ricky Sapp, number seven, a great defensive end rusher, moves in to put the hit on. And you have to wonder right now, Clemson kind of standing around a little bit. I mean, that was a devastating loss last week to Boston College at home. The way they lost and all that was riding on that football team. And then it starts out so easy tonight for Clemson. And all of a sudden, Gary, I mean, momentum right now and effort seems to be on the side of South Carolina to me. After a slow start and falling behind with an intercepted pass and a block punt that was returned TD, big rush incomplete. And he's second down at seven. And I do mean a big rush. Back of the 35 yard line, Blake Mitchell. And all he had in front of him was the wrong color jersey. Yeah, Nick Watkins just runs right up the center guard gap. I think this is Nick right here. He's just going to come unblocked. And as you mentioned, Blake Mitchell's not a guy, Gary, that's going to escape a whole lot. Does a good job of just getting rid of that football there because Nick Watkins was unblocked right up the gut. Both of these teams' offenses have given up a lot of sacks. Their quarterbacks have been touched up on each side for a ton of sacks. Boyd in the backfield now on this third down and seven over the middle incomplete catchable football that would have been enough for a first down Andy Boyd the tight end boy Gary you mentioned I mean Andy Boyd a sixth year senior not particularly known for his pass catching ability but that would have been a huge third down conversion if Andy could have made that play Andy Boyd unable to hang on to that one he has only eight receptions on the season and now it'll bring up a punting situation on a fourth down and long yardage. Tell you what, I'm, excuse me, Gary. Nope, Spiller is back. Another dangerous runner. Suckup's kick will be handled on the 12 yard line as a fair catch where they will take over. So the defense is rising to the occasion here in the second quarter. 38 yard punt, no return on it. Three point difference. ESPN's College Football Primetime. Brought to you by Nissan, who invites you to shift the way you move through the world. And Radio Shack, where this holiday season you don't just buy stuff, you do stuff. University of South Carolina, 1872. Horseshoe design, 11 buildings. That was the original campus, the federal architecture, and it is still very much present here. Davis in the backfield. They need a little running room. Looking, 15-yard line, great clip tackle made right there as Rendrick Taylor will get the reception and pay the price. Play by Taylor. Great to have you with us. 82,410 on hand in this great rivalry. Along with Bob Davey and Stacey Dales and our crew, I'm Gary Thorne. For Steve Spurrier, he had never lost four games in a row in his coaching career, 18 years worth. Well, he comes into this one, he's lost four games in a row. South Carolina is trying to get out of that losing streak. A second down and eight. Picked up at the 15, the 20, slipping away to the far side, 30-yard line, and driven out of bounds up to the 33 as Darlin Stewart came over to put the hit on James Davis, a 19-yard gain. Clemson continuing to run it. Really good block right here by Palmer, the tight end. Gets James Davis going right there. Palmer stays with it. And then you see the north-south explosive ability just runs through that tackler right there. And watch the stiff arm right there. Wow. Davis is one exciting runner, isn't he? And Addison Williams, the true freshman corner, just got a mouthful right there. 
in the stiff arm. Now Davis is going to take the snap straight ahead and uh, will carry that one over the 35 to the 37 38 yard line. That's the second time we have seen Davis move into the snap position <laughs> instead of the quarterback. Man coaches are copycats aren't they? They are. Oh I mean we met with James Davis last week before the BC game and we talked about Darren McFadden and what he does in the Wild Hog formation at Arkansas. James Davis eyes lit up. You know he went into the coaches and you know those Clemson coaches they watched that Arkansas game yesterday against LSU exactly and so let's do a little bit more of that now. eight carries 59 yards for Davis Harper now back in at quarterback they'll go the wide side with blocking in front over midfield and out of bounds at the 45 yard line that is CJ Spiller there is a flag down as it gets a little hot over there on the sideline 18 yard gain for the moment. Yeah we're going to get a late hit on Melvin Ingram number six over there on C.J. Spiller right amongst the Clemson bench. Marvin Ingram another one of those freshmen for Steve ball Spiller. Foul. Number six of the defense late hit out of bounds 15 yard penalty first down. That's a big time ouch right there. We're we mentioned a lot of young players playing for Steve Spurrier. Yeah, I mean, that was uncalled for over there. It wasn't a vicious hit, but there was no reason. I mean, you could see C.J. Spiller had pulled up right there. And to Ingram's credit, he, he looked like he tried to hold up. I agree. When I agree. he got over there, that's a, that's a close call. So a total of 34 yards on that play when you add the penalty to it. Davis in the backfield. He'll go straight ahead. Little slant to the right side. He'll take that down to the 27 yard line. Casper Brinkley, defensive end on the hit. In the pregame, how about this gathering in midfield? I'll tell you, that is unbelievable. Now, you see how much attention coaches get in major college football, particularly in the South. I don't think there's going to be a whole lot of secrets shared right there between those two guys. But I mean, isn't it amazing the attention coaches get in this part uh, of the it, country? Hey, it is. Well, those salaries are where they are. Got hit as he threw it. It's completed inside the 20 and out of bounds near the 15 yard line. That is Aaron Kelly, their leading receiver on the season, his 76th catch of the year for a first down and his first catch. Gary, you know, we talk about all that attention those coaches get. Can't help you make you think about Nick Saban and some of his statements this week comparing the catastrophes of losing to Louisiana Monroe and also comparing it to 9-11 and Pearl Harbor and so on. And I know what he meant, but sometimes you start talking a little too much when you get all that attention and it comes back to bite you. Off the right side and down to the 10 yard line. That is James Davis again. Davis has had four 100 yard rushing games this year, 11 in his career. And right now he's piling up the kind of yardage that's going to be a 100 yard plus rushing game again. And a highly, highly recruited kid out of Atlanta. Went to Clemson because Clemson was the first team to offer him. And he never forgot that. Now, he's thought about going home a little bit, particularly when he first arrived on campus at Clemson, but he stuck it out. Over 3,000 yards now for his career as a result of that last carry. A second down and five. Little comeback pattern. That'll take it down to the four yard line as they again are running towards the middle. Nelson Ferber came in and picked that one up. He was wide open in the middle, and it'll be a first down. That First was a and goal. Great tackle out there by Emmanuel Cook. And this guy right here is a great contact football player. He's their number one tackler on this football team. He's really like a linebacker playing DB, but that was a great tackle in the open field out there. So a big drive for Clemson. First and goal. Ball at the five yard line. Davis is in the backfield. Davis off the right side. And he may get a yard out of that. Brandon Pilgrim. Thomas Austin the center and the right guard trying to open it up for him. Now this defense being asked to rise to the occasion for South Carolina and they got Jonathan they got to Kendrick Ellis defensive tackle in the hit. A lot of good young players here at South Carolina. I mean this guy's 6'5", 335 pound freshman Kendrick Ellison and he ripped the offensive guard that time in front of him. 
And a timeout will be taken on a second down and goal from the five yard line, a four yard line officially. They want to talk about it here on both sides, as obviously we're seeing the defenses playing a whole lot better for both of these teams, but especially for South Carolina than what we have seen in the past couple of weeks. The Big 12 Pac-10 uh, Hardwood Series, part of the Feast Week presented by Lowe's, is on ESPN Sunday night at 8 Eastern. Chase Benninger will lead the Arizona Wildcats against Brandon Rush and the number four Kansas Jayhawks. Yeah, Lou Olson still uh, on a leave of absence, if I'm not mistaken, at Arizona. There are the schools who've got it going on the hardwood and on the field with Kansas. How about that for their football and basketball programs right now? That is unbelievable. Second in one and fourth in the other. Well, what do you want to run here, coach? <laughs> I'll tell you what, the way offenses are now, you have to be prepared to defend it all. I mean, think of all the offense we've seen with the reverses, fake reverses, screens. I like number one, James Davis, with his hands on the football right now, though. Tenth play of this drive. It started all the way back on their own 12 yard line. Davis is indeed in that backfield on this second down and goal. They're looking to the air. Over the middle. Caught and touchdown. A slant from the right side as again Faber came in to make the catch a four yard touchdown pass. Well, you were right about that one, coach. <laughs> you just never know. They put it up in the air for the four yard touchdown catch. And that is probably the last thing that South Carolina's defense was looking for. Yeah, and it's been a big night right now for Nelson Faber, also with the block punt. I mean, this guy came out of nowhere tonight. And you see kind of a funny motion right there by Cullen Harper, how he pulls that football back so far before his release. But Colts puts it up and through. He is perfect on uh, the extra points on the season. Harper four for four on that drive from his QB position, 17-7. Cullen Harper leading the attack for Clemson as they get one on the board. They have had drives of three possessions of nine, 13, and 10 plays. And he has been effective in the air when he's had to go there. Boy, he's had a great year, hasn't he? Yes. Colin Harper, a wing T quarterback in high school, wanted to go to Georgia where his dad played. They didn't offer him a scholarship. He comes here to Clemson, sits three years, and now is the starting quarterback in his fourth year. Gulliver will hang on to that one, and we'll check in again with Stacy Dale. Stace. What a big night for Nelson Fairber thus far. Remember, he blocked the punt early. He just had his second career touchdown. Guys, this player was a walk-on for Clemson. He's only really a third-string guy playing because of injuries. He went to the same high school as Charlie Whitehurst at Chattahoochee in Georgia. What an exceptional job he's done filling in for this Clemson team despite all the injuries, guys. Big night for him so far. Yeah, Fairber had only four catches on the season coming in, and another big play just happened. The officials have ruled that ball is down at the one yard line. At yep. the one yard line. And another freshman, Chris Culliver, number 17. Steve Spurrier playing a lot of young guys and a lot of young mistakes. Once again, all that matters is where the football, the feet don't matter. Wow. He caught it at the one. Took it wow. back into the end zone. Yeah, I don't understand that right there. So it is at the one yard line where South Carolina's got to start. Out of the gun, big rush, thrown over the middle. It'll be incomplete at about the 13 yard line as Blake Mitchell went to the air on that one, trying to get to LaCorn. It looked to me on that kickoff that the momentum of the kick itself drove Culliver into the end zone. Let's take a look again. I think that should be a touchback. That should be a touchback, and the ball should come out at the 20. I mean, he just went back in the momentum of the kick. Yeah. Drove him into the end zone. Yeah, I, he, I he agree didn't have with you. possession of that football on the on the field of play. 
Second down and 10. Clemson a chance to hold here and get great field position. Good protection to the 10 11 yard line and a second effort will get a first down up to the 12. That's LaCorn again on the reception. That's a big play to give him a little breathing room. Boy, you're right. I mean, this is Steve Spurrier timing game passing. You see just the quick curl route and the ball thrown on time. And Dion LaCorn, another freshman. So I'm going to tell you something now. The future at South Carolina, Gary, with these young players is bright now. We showed you the quote of Steve Spurrier before. I'm putting guys out there who aren't playing hard enough. I don't like their attitude. I'm not going to put them out there anymore. So the younger players get an opportunity. First down and 10. That is at the 10 yard line on the reception and carried up to about the 23 yard line. Again, set up on the far side uh, to McKinley, their leading receiver in his 31st start. Yeah, good block by Freddie Brown, number 82, right there. I, now, wait a second. I wanted to say good block. I'm not sure you could have cracked an egg right there between <laughs> those two guys if I say it like it is. Now. Uh, I mean, there was you, no pads popping right no, now, Gary. That no, there was like, no pads popping. I no. mean, they could have done that in the library and it wouldn't have disturbed anyone. There was a little dance going on there, but wow. he, eff he effectively held him up. They got to be in the same fraternity or something now, those two guys. <laughs> Straight ahead, good second effort. Third effort and moves the ball up to the 30-yard line. Corey Boyd is really digging in here in this football game on his carries. I'll tell you what, he is a great effort football player. Right there makes a great move on number 20, Tremaine Billy. And Stacy Dales talked to him the other night on the telephone. And after the conversation, he said, Stacy, I got to tell you one more thing. And I'm going to let Stacy Dales tell that story because I don't want to screw it up, but it's about graduating from South Carolina. There he is again trying to get away from the tacklers. Not this time. He's going to be brought down. Corey Boyd. Let's finish that story with Stacy. Well, how gracious of you, Bob. <laughs> Well, I did talk to him this week, and I had a great conversation. We talked about the rivalry in football, and I got off the phone, or he got off the phone with me, and I went back with the SID, Andrew Kiddick, and Andrew said, oh, hold on. And Corey came back, and he said, make sure you tell her one more thing. December 17th, 3 p.m., hospitality management, that's when I'm graduating. This guy's come a long way, Bob. Yes, thanks. Did I leave a little meat on that bone for you right there? I mean, I didn't want to use that whole story. That perfect. <laughs> I mean, you, that's the coach right there. I got you. I dished it off at the last second. To you. <laughs> Incomplete on the third down and eight. Fans wanted a flag on that. They had lost five on the last carry. Freddie Brown, the intended receiver. Chancellor again, Chris Chancellor over there. He's had one interception in the football game. It'll be incomplete to bring up a fourth down and a punting situation. Spurrier not happy that they weren't able to move it out after they started at the one and got a big first down. Well, and they better be careful right here. Mike Davis, this right slot back, has struggled a little bit on punt protection, as has South Carolina. So get this punt off right now. Ryan Suckup, who is fifth in the SEC, averaging almost 42 yards a kick. Plenty of time. Foot into it at the 15-yard line. Spiller is back. Plays it on the hop. And uh, not going anywhere. In fact, they got driven back a couple of yards on that one. He averages about to 10 yards per return, but not that time. Good coverage by Ivan uh, Bannock. And a great job by Mike Davis. I want you to watch him right here. We've been on him a little bit, but he is going to step up and block right here. Watch. Boom. That is a great job right there. Now that's not library material. No, they're getting after a little bit right there. That's our guy Nelson Faber again, 83, having a career night right now. He's having a great game. 38-yard <laughs> kick, good field position as Clemson will take over. 319 left to go here in the first half. Straight ahead up to the 45 and out of bounds near the marker. C.J. Spiller again on the carry. Spiller getting himself another big gain. The Clemson block punt for a TD. McKinley with the eighth TD reception of the season. Putting it across, total yards, Clemson and South Carolina, not bad. Brought to you by GoDaddy on our game track. And a good football game here, but right now, the South Carolina defense has got to hold Clemson. Spiller again in the backfield. Colin Harper. Second down, very short yardage. Spiller on the carry will get the first down. And we get up towards midfield, 49-yard line as Sapp moved in. Marvin Sapp in the hit. 
You talk about Spiller now. Here's a guy who wears 28 because of Warwick Dunn, who played at Florida State, but he only grew up 25 miles from Gainesville, Florida. Came up here to Clemson, almost left after last season. Wasn't happy, particularly after the loss in the bowl game. But how about Clemson going down and taking him away from Florida State and Florida? The schools would like to have had him uh, in hindsight. It is a first down and a 10 for Clemson with Spiller staying in there. Fake to him. Big rush. Trying to get rid of it. Dumps it off. No flag on the play. There was a receiver in the area, Eric Norwood, who is the leading tackler, the leading sack man, the leading quarterback hit guy, was in defensively. Yeah, and I think what the referee right there is going to rule is that Cullen Harper was outside the tackle box when that ball was thrown, which I think is a good call. And as long as that ball went past the line of scrimmage, he's okay. That will bring up the second down and 10. There's Norwood. He can put the heat on. He is explosive in that defensive end position. Spiller will stay in there and take the football. Spiller 45, 40 yard line. And he's got enough for a first down as Rodney Polk came in to finally shut him down. Let's check in with Stan Barrett. Stan. All right, Gary, Jesse Palmer is going to join me for the Yamaha Halftime Report. Another day, another overtime thriller in the SEC. We'll show you Tennessee and their big win today. Plus, the Mountaineers rolling over UConn. And even though the season's not over, we've already got coaching changes. Plenty of them. You know, not just with the coaching changes. West Virginia today getting a big win against UConn. Not only making a statement for a national title, I think making a statement for that number one ranking as well, Stan. All right, all those highlights and more coming up. The Yamaha Halftime Report, Gary. You know the stand is really down today. Yes. Yeah, I mean that LSU loss yesterday in triple overtime, that took a lot out of Stan Verrett. He doesn't even sound like himself. What a football game that was, I'll tell you. That'll be carried up on the first down for a gain of about four. Again, the numbers at the top of Kansas, Missouri. That's why that game's so important now. <laughs> All of a sudden somebody else looking to be number I'm one. I'll tell you what, there's one that isn't on there. But if I had to put my own money down on the line, I'm going with the USC Trojans right now, the way they're playing in this season. At the 35-yard line, Rendrick Taylor moved in and made the reception. He'll get only about a yard on that. So we've seen the uh, thunder and lightning uh, going off here tonight. James Davis, who is thunder, 67 yards. C.J. Spiller has got 72 yards rushing. And that is Brandon Pilgrim, you saw walking away. Disappointing it a fifth year senior. You know he'd like to finish out this game and finish out his career. Clemson has tried to play a little hurry up here with the clock ticking at a minute 17 in the first half. They've got a third down and four. Third down and four for Clemson in South Carolina territory. Two receivers, nobody in the backfield, one tight end over the middle. It is caught. That's going to be a first down. Ball is fumbled. Fumbled and picked. And what could be an enormous play in this football game? Pick that ball off in the pack. You talked about it. Maybe an enormous change of events right here. I think his knee was down. Let's go back and look at that again. Watch his knee. He's down. That ball is going to come back, and that is reviewable. Wow. The previous play is under review. It is under review, and obviously, no matter which way it goes, the call is an enormous one. Because with 52 seconds left in the half, the Gamecocks would have a tremendous opportunity to get a late touchdown if they can keep possession. Yeah, I think that he was clearly down. Yeah, that right knee is down before that football came out. Brian Linthicum, the freshman tight end, right there. It's down. That football is coming back right there. That right, that knee is down, clearly. Emmanuel Cook, though, the playmaker, stripped that football out of there, and Carlos Thomas took it to the house. But it's all going to come back. 
Lenthicum was working in a tight end position. Going to get a big break as Will Clemson by the looks of it. There's the replay booth upstairs. And replay in college football, Gary, has been a huge, huge success in my opinion. The only problem, it takes a little bit longer sometimes than it should on some of the obvious calls. After review by video, there is indisputable evidence that there was a catch, a knee was on the ground, therefore the call has been reversed. It is a first down on the 27-yard line. Steve Spurrier on the right could only fold his arms, no question that that was the correct call, but it is enormous. It was an enormous call, and it's obvious his knee is down right there. But now this young South Carolina defense that's taken so many bullets this year, Gary, they have to step up right now because their confidence is shaken. If anyone deserved a break, it was probably the South Carolina defense. But they got to be careful right now not to give up the home run. It nullifies a 67 yard return, and it would have been inside the red zone. Instead, it is a first down for Clemson. Keep an eye on the clock. 52 seconds left to go. They went to the sideline, obviously, to get the play here. 101. They want the clock changed, and that also is in Clemson's favor, as it obviously that run took time up, so they'll go from 52 seconds to a minute and one second. Clemson with two timeouts. You see our little slashes right there indicating two timeouts. Spiller in the backfield. It is a first down and 10. Clemson pushing the ball into South Carolina territory carried off that left side down inside the 20 yard line. They've run a number of reverses. Chris Hampton coming up to get it. That was Spiller again coming around to take that. Again they're trying to preserve those timeouts with the clock running at 30 seconds left to go. You see the speed of Spiller now. He is a quick quick guy. Second down and three. Second and three. Harper out of the gun trying to get him set they're using up a lot of time here he will look to the right side where they flood the receivers caught but immediately tackled at the 19 yard line Faber again Nelson Faber and now the timeout will be used and Gary I think where you were headed right there with me was they used up a lot of time I mean, it's one thing to save those two timeouts, but don't get up at the line of scrimmage. Take so much time, then motion and run that clock all the way down to nine seconds. Now you got to make a big decision. You got time to maybe do that one more play. Yeah, I think you do. But remember last week against Boston College, they were in a similar situation setting up the game winning field goal they went for one more play took the sack yeah that took Buckholz back to a 54 yard attempt so you're rolling the dice right now even though you have a timeout if you're Clemson but I don't I think that was poor clock management right there not so much that they tried to save the timeout but there was no urgency at all to get the ball snap now you're down to one play all right let's see what they're going to do with it here as you got to believe they'll try for the end zone. It obviously becomes dangerous if you got to put it up in the air. Clemson offense, 143 yards rushing in the air, 13 for 16, 73 yards for Cullen Harper. I tell you, Eric Norwood, number 40 up here, excellent pass rusher. They will work under center, looking down the middle. It is caught, and no, it was not. Incomplete pass inside the five yard line. As Aaron Kelly was the intended receiver, their leading receiver, and now Buckholz will come on for the field goal with the clock having run down to four seconds left to go. Mark Buckholz out to do the kicking, 17 out of 27 coming into this football game. He has already made the 48 yarder, one for one today, and this one from the right hash marks for 35 yards. The last one he got was 48. A chance to add points here in the closing seconds of the first half. Good snap. Kick is up. And he was wide right. Big so psychological the, yeah. push for South Carolina going into the locker room. That defense holds up. And despite the fact they lost their chance 
after that ball had been taken all the way down inside the 10 they come back and get it done. Let's check in with Stacy coach and a parent concerted effort for you guys to run the football. How do you assess your players offensively. Well we've made some mistakes from protection from a silent standpoint it's a little loud and uh, communication has been a problem other than that we've both been all right. What do you say to your players at the half in such a rivalry heated situation. Well we just got we got to stop making mistakes on offense and defense. We just gonna have to slow them down stop on a couple drives get us the ball. How do you slow them down coach. Well you got a sack and we got to got to knock the ball down. All right thanks. All Gary. right Stacy thanks and in this one South Carolina's chance to get out of that four game losing streak it is there even though Clemson's got a 17 7 lead Yamaha halftime report lots of action Stan and Jesse. It has been 37 years since South Carolina has beaten Clemson in consecutive seasons. Clemson trying to prevent that. South Carolina trying to get out of their four game losing streak in addition to trying to come away with a victory here in this one. 17 7. Welcome back everybody. Bob Davy and Stacy Dials. I'm Gary Thorne and our crew on hand here. 81,000 plus 82,000 plus officially on hand here for this football game and a good first half. Clemson. Well, the big numbers stands out. Time of possession, 1837 for Clemson, 1123 for South Carolina. Yeah, and there's a couple reasons for that. Number one, Clemson's offense is really balanced, particularly with those two running backs, Davis and Spiller. But South Carolina's offense has made some silly mistakes and have been unable to, to stay on track down and distance wise. Clemson's going to get the football. The pick will be taken at the two yard line. Aaron Kelly. 25 straight up the gut on that one and he will be downed maybe <laughs> look at this he still <laughs> he still is up good return as he'll bring that ball up to about the 27 yard line well first half Clemson won a few of the battles and they're in the football game and got the lead yeah and I think South Carolina they can come back and win this game they just have to play a little bit smarter and play a little bit better. I think you're going to hear Steve Spurrier say that himself. You know, they had some silly penalties, two holdings and a personal foul. They had a block punt for a touchdown, and they threw an interception. Yep. I mean, South Carolina's defense is hanging in there. They've been on the field a little bit too much, but I think their offense can help them by not making silly mistakes offensively. Clemson will get the first offensive effort here in this first down and 10 straight ahead and off will take it to about the 30 James Davis on the carry Stacy had a chance to talk with Steve Spurrier coach 143 rush yards for Clemson what did you say specifically to your defense at the well, half you know our defense played pretty well we've held them to 10 points we had a punt block for a touchdown and offensively we hadn't been out there much and you know we had a holding penalty an intercept and, uh, but we're only 10 down yeah, I know. our defense is playing pretty hard I know effort's been a concern for you. How do you grade the effort? I thought the effort was pretty good. We just got to play a lot smarter and better. Thanks, Coach. And on that carry, it'll be up to the 40-yard line as Kendrick Ellis for South Carolina put the hit on. And what Clemson's been able to do in their possessions in the first half, at least nine plays with a balanced attack, at least nine, as they carried the football possession-wise throughout that first half. And that's what Steve Spurrier was just talking about. Got to shut him down. Call it Harper. Another first down at 10. He's got Davis in the backfield. Spiller at 79 yards. Davis 67 in the first half. Harper, good job in the air. 73 yards. Spun around and nobody was there. Guns that one to the sideline and incomplete. He had to get rid of it with Rundrick Taylor over there. Our GoDaddy game track taking a look at the first half. Yeah, I think the, the first thing you see is Clemson with a concentrated effort to run the football. They only had 47 yards rushing last week against Boston College. But Gary, you mentioned it. I mean, just time of possession right there. And if you give Clemson that many opportunities with the speed and explosiveness, you're playing with fire. 
So I think their defense is hung in there, talking about South Carolina. When they get the ball back, they have to function and execute better offensively to keep Clemson's offense off the field. A second down and a 10. Spiller on the carry, and that's right at the line of scrimmage. And again, Kendrick Ellis inserted as a starter for this game, a freshman, number 97. He's played well. You're right. I mean, another freshman. Let's find him. I think he's right here. Probably the biggest guy up there on the front. That's good quickness for 335 pounds now. That's impressive. Got of West Palm Beach, Florida. Let's see where they like him. Four for seven in third down conversions. This is a third down and ten for Clemson to start this second half. Cullen Harper, the quarterback. Good protection in the pocket. Sideline incomplete off the fingertips of the 45-yard line. Kendrick Taylor, again the intended. And a good play by Stoney Woodson. Woodson's had to come on. It's only his second start, number 36, because they are missing Marlin. Captain Marlin, who's generally a starter, is out of there. So Woodson, they've gone trying to get to him a couple of times in this game, and he's played well. Yeah, that's a great point. I mean, Captain Marlin is really their shutdown corner. I've been impressed with Stoney Woodson tonight. Only five plays on that possession for Clemson, the fewest they've had in any possession so far in this game. South Carolina's had two punts blocked. Excuse me, Clemson's had two punts blocked this year as well. Maynard's gets that one off. That'll take a hop and pretty much stay right where it landed. And it'll be at the 27-yard line where it'll be a first down in 10, a 33-yard punt. Good field position for South Carolina. And great to have you with us. And what has turned out to be a really beautiful evening for football here in Columbia, South Carolina. It is a first down and 10. Corey Boyd in that backfield. Blake Mitchell, big rush, gets away in the middle and incomplete. Out of the 45 yard line, LaCorn, Dion LaCorn, the intended receiver. I think you could see the biggest problem Blake Mitchell has, Gary, is just his maneuverability back there of making guys miss and then being able to make a throw on the move a little bit. And that's the thing Cullen Harper has. That's the thing all these quarterbacks you see around the country have that he doesn't have the ability to take a play that breaks down and turn it into a positive play. The uh, Gamecocks have been in and out with their quarterbacks as Mitchell started games two through four and now has started the last three. That one will be at the 30 yard line. McKinley did a little tumble on that one and is credited with the catch. It'll only be about a three yard gain. It is his fourth catch. He's looking for six to break the Shannon Sharp mark, the single season reception record for South Carolina. So a couple more. And it will be his. Yeah, and all of a sudden right now, he'll have a shot if USC can pass protect right here because third down and eight, that talented front is in those speed stances right there. Two out of five, third down conversions, a lot of pressure, and that'll be incomplete. Good rush put on, and he got hit as he tried to dump that one off. That was incomplete with Tremaine Billy coming on and putting the heat on. And boy, Billy's going to love that. Billy is from right here. This is his home. Well, he has to credit Vic Caning, the defensive coordinator, becomes he, because he comes with a field blitz. Tremaine Billy looked like he was out in coverage. South Carolina didn't account for him, and then he came flat and free on that blitz. So it is going to be a three and out here as South Carolina could not take advantage of the defensive work their team did. And now Suckup will put the foot into it. No, he won't. It is blocked again. At the 20 yard line, blocked punt. Oh, mercy. LaDonte Harris may be the nation's best worker on punts after this game is done. And this is just a broken assignment. They flat turned Harris loose. I think he is right here, and he is going to come completely free. Let's see if that's 26, LaDonte Harris. Yeah, it is. I mean, the last one, Mike Davis, was a technique breakdown. This was just a flat scheme breakdown, and you cannot ha have that happen. I mean, if a team blocks two punts on you, I don't have the statistics in front of me, 
but your chances of winning are well below 10 percent. Then four punts and two of them have been blocked. First down and 10, and it'll be carried out of bounds down to about the 18 yard line by C.J. Spiller. Another great field position. Clemson, keep in mind they scored. It was Harris in the first quarter who had that 10 yard return for a touchdown on a blocked punt. Now blocks another one. And Spurrier's team in trouble right here as their defense again has got to rise to the occasion. Gary, that's three block punts in the last two games for South Carolina. I mean, that just cannot, cannot happen. It is a second down and six. Spiller in the backfield, straight ahead. Makes a good move at the 15. Gets hauled down by Cody Wells, the linebacker. Not enough for the first down, but he is at the 15 yard line. It would be a victory for the South Carolina defense here if they could hold him to just three. Better if they could get a turnover. They will come in with the pass coverage specialist, a third down and three. Ball at the 15 yard line. Colin Harper backs up into the gun. Spiller's back there with him. Two receivers now on that right side. He looks back, short side. It is caught at the 10 yard line, breaking away and down to the five. And that is Aaron Kelly, the leading receiver for Clemson. And you very seldom you see a big, tall, lanky wide receiver catch these wide receiver screens. There's going to be a missed tackle right there by Emmanuel Cook. But normally, that's your little speed receiver that catches those wide receivers screens. But good to see Aaron Kelly bounce back, Gary, after that big drop last week against BC. Kelly gets that one for 10 yards. It is a first down and goal from the five-yard line. Clemson with a chance to extend their lead. Spiller goes off the left side. He'll be down to about the two-yard line this time. Just diving straight ahead. Barry Richardson, their big up-front man, number 79, and all ACC last year. A big-time blocker right there. He's the best up front, so when you got short yardage carries, it'll be right over the back. Not many guys in major college football, four-year starters. That's a bunch of snaps right there, over 2,500 snaps. It is a second down and goal. Officially spotted at the two-yard line now. Spiller again back there. Fake to him, looking over the middle. It is intercepted and carried out to the 10. Kidding me? Colin Harper, who has been the model, model of consistency, just throws this football late and right flat to Emmanuel Cook, number 21. I mean, stared right at him and threw it right at him. You saw the tight end fell down, but that ball was thrown flat in the middle of that number 21's chest now. Cook's third interception of the year. A big turnover. South Carolina trying to run this one wide. We'll get maybe a yard out of this at the 35-yard line. A little extracurricular activity. The officials come over to move people away. Nick Watkins, the leading tackler for Clemson, in on the hit. You know, Gary, you have the feeling right now that South Carolina has been given a giant break in this game and right now they need to step up and get something going now. It's now or never in my opinion for South Carolina. The flip back 35 up to the 40 yard line Corey Boyd on the carry and you can see that South Carolina has gone to a hurry up offense and you can also see when things start bogging down Steve Spurrier's safety net is Corey Boyd. He puts that ball in Corey Boyd's hands when everybody else is struggling. He had 30 yards on nine carries in the first half. It'll bring up a third down and four, long four. He's got 11 carries for 36 yards now for Corey Boyd. And the South Carolina offense gets the football back after the interception and a good bring out of 35 yards after the interception to set up the good field position here. 
looking to the right side. Blake Mitchell, little dump pass. Midfield turns back into the middle and will take that one down to the 40 yard line. Good second effort. That is LaCorn. Ian LaCorn is having a heck of a game, not only catching it, but after he catches it. And that was a great play call right there. Dion LaCorn is going to come in motion and watch him all the way. He's going to come over and then just freeze a second and then release to the flat off the play action. Watch him kind of hide right here and then run out to the flat. Excellent little play action pass and Gary a huge third down conversion. Big 20 yard gain first and 10 in the middle going for the downs one on one. You talk about momentum change. 30 seconds ago, Clemson was going to score, and the next thing you know, 100 yards opposite of field position, Kenny McKinley breaks the post route on number 36, Byron Maxwell, and Blake Mitchell delivered the football. You talk about a change of emotion and momentum now. Ooh. It was a second down and goal at the two yard line when that interception was had Clemson looked like they were going to score five plays later after the interception a touchdown the point after by suck up and South Carolina is right back in it and there's the play the pickoff great field position the long bomb. ESPN's College Football Primetime, brought to you by Volkswagen. When you get into a Volkswagen, it gets into you. And Fathead.com, the biggest players, the biggest moments, never look so real. Heck of a football game. Kenny McKinley's had two touchdown catches in this game. That last one, a 40-yard reception, is tied. The record of Shannon Sharp for the single season record of receptions in a season. One more, and the record will be his. An unusual two minute drill right there because that two <laughs> minutes on the interception, caught in the end zone, and then returned 66 yards on the drive for the TD. This kickoff is going to be taken in the end zone, and there it will be down by Spiller. We take a look at this touchdown. I want you to watch the safety. South, uh, Clemson's playing quarters, which means four DBs divide the field in force. But the safety is going to chase the tight end on the crossing route. Now, once he chases the tight end on the crossing route, now you have Kenny McKinley wide open with all that grass inside. And the corner just has no chance because there's a huge void in that zone coverage but a great route to attack four deep or quarters coverage they got the safety out of his quarter the corner had no chance and the house is a rocket straight ahead off the right side to about the 22 yard line for Davis and let's check in with Stacy well Bob Davey you mentioned it in the first half that this guy right here Kenny McKinley never played a lick of receiver in high school he was solely a quarterback and I had a chance to talk to him this week he said hey you know what I never ran a route in my life before I got to South Carolina and basically he was a little bit concerned when he came in but I said what was the difference why'd you come the old ball coach guys told him that he would be a great receiver and he's doing it tonight out of the gun over the middle caught 40 yard line big play right there and Clemson coming right back and the gang tackling going on not every uh, color jersey for the Gamecocks was there. It's going to be a 19 yard gain to Aaron Kelly. <laughs> well, that's what happens when you're a big six foot five, 190 pound receiver. You're a big old target that they kind of hold up in the air so all the buddies can come jump on the back. But there was a huge void right there in that coverage. I mean, there was a. It was like the Grand Canyon thrown into the Grand Canyon right there. It was so big. Now Cullen Harper is bringing Clemson right back up the field as they get the first down at 10. Up to the 42 yard line, Davis in the backfield. Fake the reverse, comes to Davis, nowhere to go, and driven out of bounds with a flag down. Loss of a couple of yards as Emmanuel Cook took him out of bounds, but let's check the flag. Looks like a hold, I think, on 79, Barry Richardson. But it was I mean, big Barry comes off down here on Norwood 
Yeah, I think right there he gets kind of twisted Holding around. Number 79 of the offense. That's a 10 yard penalty. Repeat first down. Boy, what a battle that is, coach. You've got Richardson, who we talked about, 48th consecutive game he's appeared in, an all ACC player last year. Eric Norwood. It was the all all freshman all American team last year and they're up against one another exactly and Norwood's a compact shorter explosive guy that a big six seven guy like Barry Richardson struggles with a little bit first down at 20 with Davis in the backfield the delayed draw and we'll take that one up to the 38 yard line as they ran that one right into Melvin. Ingraham that there I'm mean, who made the tackle and I'll tell you what Barry Richardson got called for holding on the last play which was pretty close but let's watch him here the left tackle on Brinkley right here I think he mugged him here watch I mean how do you not call that one he mugged him he was trying to pick up a jersey oh, to take home man. as a remembrance of this game wow you got to get your souvenirs where you can second down and uh, 13 Speller in the backfield Clemson trying to work off that penalty protection Completed midfield and more. That'll be down to the 46 yard line. Aaron Kelly, all of a sudden, their number one receiver is coming into the four. That is enough for the first down as he dove forward. 14 yards on that one. He's got four receptions for 54 yards. Gary, that's stealing right there. South Carolina in zone coverage. Cliff Matthews, the freshman linebacker that time, avoided. Voided that area in coverage. That's one of the toughest things. You see the coach talking to him there for a young guy. This pass coverage for a linebacker. Spiller's going to go nowhere on that one. Back to near midfield. Eric Norwood again moving in to put the hit on, and there will be a loss of a couple of yards on that play. Spiller taken down as you got to look at the tackle by Norwood. <laughs> you don't think coaching's a hard profession. Now, nah. Tommy Bowden over on that sideline. They've got the game in control up 17-7. They're going in to score with Cullen Harper, who's number one in the ACC in pass efficiency. The next thing you know, it's an interception on the 17-14 game. That's a tough way to make it. It run. is. Davis and Spiller. Spiller goes in motion to the far side. Second down and 12 now for midfield. Flag is down. And it will be whistled before the snap of the football. The penalty, at least. Prior to the snap, false start, number 80 of the offense, five yards, still second down. Gary, one thing I noticed, Thomas Austin, 65, the center, struggled last week with shotgun snaps against BC. Had a little case of the yips as that game went on. He's starting to struggle right now a little bit. Those shotgun snaps are getting higher and higher. He is a right guard he had five starts at right guard he started the last seven at center and admitted during the week coach that he had the gifts yeah well we've had him on that yeah. green right we yeah. had putter in our hand yeah I mean it's not uncommon for a guy <laughs> long yardage play here five receivers Harper midfield and driven out of bounds not even back to the original line of scrimmage as Harper had no one to throw to good coverage and you feel like right now, if you're South Carolina, I know it's third down and long, but I'd bring a little heat on Cullen Harper. Don't sit back there and give them a soft zone coverage and let him have a huge conversion. Come after him, put a little pressure on him right here. It'll be a third down and long yardage, third down and 14. They spread those receivers to the right side, bring one back. Davis, the man in the backfield. Harper rolling to that strong side over the middle. He tried to throw back against the defense, and a flag is down. Rendrick Taylor, the intended, he got hit from behind. That pass was not going to be completed, and a costly penalty against South Carolina. Boy, you said it. Pass interference. Wow. 45 of the defense. Penalty places the ball at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. You know, watch Rodney Polk. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you can't make that mistake, Rodney. I mean, South Carolina, not a lot of penalties tonight, but does that facial expression 
say it all right there. <sighs> Those I mean, are, that tears your gut out right there if you're Steve Spurrier. It wasn't even close to a first down, even if the ball had been caught. Exactly. And now it is a first down. Davis in the backfield, first and ten. That one incomplete. They're looking for an out pattern, and instead the receiver was heading down the sideline. <laughs> This possession, Clemson has had to overcome the first and 20, the second and 17. They've been able to do it twice, avoiding a loss of the football in this drive. And all of a sudden, you feel like Clemson throwing the football a little more than they did early in the football game, and they've gotten away from the run a little bit, which surprises me, particularly after the big change in momentum by Carolina. You think you'd go back and run that a little more and just settle things down a little bit. Second down and 10, Cullen Hopper, 17th in the nation in pass efficiency coming into this game. He started them all at quarterback for Clemson. Quick drop, looking pass completed, and down to the 34 yard line, very close to another first down. Will depend on the spot here. There you see the play selection in the eight wins run the football. The losses, they've passed. Here in the second half, they're trying to go against the grain by the looks of it. You know, it's a little bit deceptive because Virginia Tech, Georgia Tech, they're behind in those games and they have to throw. They may have wanted to run the ball initially and end up having to throw the ball. So with any of those stats, they become a little bit skewed at times. Yep. But I wouldn't abandon the running game because these running backs, they can take it to the house every time they touch it now. They needed 10. They got 11 first down. Spiller, as you speak, coach, inside the 20 yard line and down to the 15, James Davis. Davis and Spiller, Spiller and Davis. That's a 19 yard gain. These two are having a great rushing game for both of them. You're going to get a good look at the block by the right guard, kind of rocking around there. But again, a good crease up in there. You see Brinkley pinching inside. I mean, it was a huge void right there. Melvin Ingram, the linebacker, really had no chance. I mean, it was a big old crease there. Both teams trying to speed up the offense here. It is a first down and 10. Davis now 17 carries, 107 yards. Straight ahead, up the middle, and to the 10-yard line. And again, that is James Davis, their junior running back, who's got a his fifth 100 yard running game this season on the 12th of his career. Yeah, right here. Give me that ball more, coach, is what he said. Last week, only 12 carries for 10 yards. That's pretty good tandem now, Davis and Spiller. Talk to talk and ran the walk. That's it. <laughs> Go in and knock on that coach's door and say, Give me the ball. You better make something happen. He says yes. Look out. 18 carries, 112 yards for Davis. It is a second down. Davis remains in the backfield. And a flag goes down. Ball carry maybe to the eight. Flag will matter here, though. We may Feel like number 71 with a hold right there for Clemson, Barry Humphreys. We have an illegal shift by the offense. The offense never got set for one second after the ready. That's a five-yard penalty. It's still second down. Clemson's not been helping their cause here on this drive. They've, they've avoided losing the football with their mistakes. There's another one that'll move the football back about the original line of scrimmage and will uh, bring up the 11th play of this series on a second down and 10 now three receivers right side looking that way over the middle it is caught good quick coverage though and downed at the 12 yard line Brian Lithium moved in to make the catch cornerbacks got up there in a hurry cook came up to make the hit yeah, and you think about this drive you talk about I think this is the 12th play of the drive but obviously that third down pass interference on Rodney Polk or South Carolina has the football right now, but keep hold him to a field goal attempt. Keep it a six point game for the Carolina defense. And that was Palmer, the tight end on the reception. A third down now and seven. Third down and seven. They've got Davis and Spiller both in there. 
Harper again looking to that side trying to free up Spiller not going to happen he'll be taken down at the 11 after a gain of about one and Carlos Thomas cornerback came up to make the hit number five when you talk about a lonely feeling now Carlos Thomas out there in the open field with Spiller just one on one with all of that green grass and this is not a great tackle watch. I mean, they kind of stumble into each other, but he used that sideline as the extra defender. So the South Carolina defense, good job. Buckholz comes on to do the kicking. 28-yarder right here. He's had a 48-yarder, missed the 35-yarder. This one is up, and this one is good. So he is two out of three, 19 out of 30 on the season now. But for South Carolina, they did what Coach was talking about. They kept it to just three, 20 to 14. This ESPN2 telecast available in remarkable high definition on ESPN2 HD presented by Pioneer Kuro. Delighted to have you with us and cock a doodle doo to you too. I'll tell you what, that rooster gets him going now. <laughs> I mean, he gets him going. The Gamecocks. <laughs> have the cock a doo of the PA system that rings out often in the course of the game. And right now, they are in this one trying to defeat number 22, Clemson. Clemson going after their 10th win would be the first time since 1990 if they could get it. Bowl positioning for both teams up for grabs. Culliver's got it. Tries to reverse direction. 20. And swung down at about the 22 yard line. And it couldn't get a lot going sideways. Butler again came up in the hit. He's been involved in a couple of tackles. It's been a good third quarter. Second time in the game. Two out of four punts have been blocked. Clemson able to take control of it, but in the end zone intercepted. And he would return that ball all the way out to the 35 yard line. Cook did. Then McKinley on the 40 yard touchdown pass, the second one that he has caught in this game. Celebration by Blake Mitchell. And that got South Carolina right back in it. And just key for South Carolina, Gary, to keep the football a little bit. I mean, time of possession, 28 minutes, 55 seconds for Clemson, 13 minutes, 49 seconds for South Carolina. So Clemson just keeping the football away from South Carolina right now. Mo Brown, that is his first reception, and it brings the ball up to the 39-yard line and a quick first down, first and 10 on a 17-yard gain. Blake Mitchell continues to heave the football. It is his sixth start this year, the 22nd of his career. 13 and 9 as a starter, number 12 at QB. How about those statistics right there? I mean, 64 plays to 33 plays. That's about as big a time differential coach as you'll see in yeah, college football. For a 20 to 14 game. In the flats, that was well read. There may be a yard gain, and they bring it back to where Kenny McKinley caught that. And Kenny McKinley. Has just set a new single season reception record for South Carolina as he picks up. And I believe that's going to be number seven in the game. And that will be one more on the season or than Shannon Sharp had for the record. Gary, you look over there at that South Carolina defense on the sideline, Tyrone Nix. I have another theory why those offenses have taken off so much statistically. These defenses get tired chasing these spread offenses around all over the field. So get them some rest over there. Great job right there. Comeback caught, 40 yard line. That is Mo Brown again. Mo, where have you been? Had not heard that name here in this game, and now he's had two in this series. Receptions, that one for 20. And this is an NFL route, a fade route, bump and run, and then you stop. And you see how difficult it is on the DB, Cresden Butler, because he doesn't know that football's coming out of there and going to be underthrown. That is a great route right there. Brown coming in to this game had 11 receptions in the game's play. In the backfield, Boyd, Boyd avoids one tackler, tries to get around the outside and can't, and will be stopped at the line of scrimmage. And the thing you see as you watch this game, and I've watched Blake Mitchell as you have a lot, he can heat up now. You talk about a streaky, streaky player. This guy is the epitome of that. I mean, when he's on, he's as good as there is. And right now you get the feeling he's on right now. Yeah, he's playing very confidently out there. 
Thind is down on the field. Jermander Thind, the left guard, number 75. So that's the uh, timeout taken here. But this big guy out of, I'm going to let you pronounce that city, but he's out of Ontario. Or maybe we should get Stacy Dales to come on and pronounce that. Hey, don't be hating on the Canadians. That's yeah. right. We're just looking for some clarification on that pronunciation up there. What Stace. kind of pronunciation? Mississauga. 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 A lot of good hockey I'm players I'm, out of there. I'm glad I'm useful for something. <laughs> <laughs> Mississauga, Ontario native, and he's coming out of there. And again, these two lines have had to juggle a lot of people. Garrett Anderson, the backup, also at center, is going to come on. It is a second down and ten. Second and ten. And the blitz is on. Covered well. It is caught, spun around at the 30, and fumbled, and Clemson's got it. That is Dion LaCorn who could not hang on to it. And Philip Merling reached in and just dug it out. And again, the South Carolina team, another mistake. And Gary, how about a defensive lineman, Philip Merling? He was dropping in a zone blitz. And watch Merling come in and keep working and just strip, strip that football out of there. That is a great effort by a defensive lineman. Chris Merlin. What is he doing back there? I'll tell you what, that's big time ball skills. Wow. For a defensive lineman. You know, his uncle coaches him, Chris Rumpf, who played at South Carolina and now is a defensive line coach at Clemson. Again into the flats and up to the 42 yard line. Aaron Kelly, who continues his second half romp, Brinkley on the hit. There's Chris Rumpf right there now. A lot of South Carolina people would tell you he looks better in that garnet than he does that orange. But how about coaching your nephew as a defensive lineman? South Carolina still in this game. They've had two block punts. They've given up an interception. Now a fumble. Still close enough. Philip Merling, the ACC Lineman of the Week, third time this year he has received that award. He leads the team in tackles and sacks and created that fumble. He got the ball back for him. It is a second down, less than a yard for the first down. Kept on the quarterback keep. Look at the hole. He does not do that very often, and he had a ton of room on that left side first down. Cullen Harper, especially with the bad somewhat bad shoulder you just don't expect him to carry it and you watch Nelson Faber we're going to let this thing oh no here's Faber right here watch him come back and he kind of blocks here and then releases out this is a heck of a job by 83 trust me just watch it right there he gets an excellent block outside on Cliff Matthews and that opens up that quarterback run right there how about Faber yeah right for Faber Big pitch back. This is Spiller on the carry. And uh, uh, maybe get a couple of yards on that one. Let's check in with Stan Barrett. Stan? Hi, right, Gary. Time for a Sports Center 30 at 30 update. West Virginia knocks off UConn 66 21 in Morgantown today. The Mountaineers will move up to at least number two in the BCS standings tomorrow. They've clinched the Big East first for a BCS Bowl. They still have Pittsburgh on the regular season schedule next week. Kansas has a chance to move to number one, but they're trailing Missouri 14 0 right now. Scott Webb has missed a pair of field goals. For the Jayhawks. Sports Center after the game on ESPN or stay current with ESPN News. And Clemson trying to take advantage of the turnover over the middle. That is caught. No. No, it is ruled as an incomplete pass. That was very close to being handled by Aaron Kelly and dropped. But the ruling is he did not have possession, so it is an incomplete pass. Well, that is very close. Great job of laying out by Aaron Kelly. Very, very close. Did he have possession? And did the ground after he had possession cause that ball to come out? That was very close right there. That is a tough call. South Carolina defense asking for their fans to come to the fore here. Five for ten on third down conversions. What a great effort. Yeah, that's close. That's very close. I mean, there's nothing else you can say. They ruled it in completion. A and third down and nine. I think it's a good decision right here to review this. 
I don't think there's enough to overturn that, though, because it was ruled incomplete on the field. You must have conclusive evidence in a review that the call on the field was wrong. Well, and the problem becomes must be. if it was a catch, was it a fumble, and did the whistle blow? Obviously, he's going to challenge. Yeah. <laughs> Tommy Bowden is talking to the people upstairs. The visiting coach has called a timeout, requesting a challenge to the previous play that the ball was caught and was down. But my point is a moot point because if he did catch it and the ground caused it, it wouldn't be a fumble anyhow. Right. So it just comes back to was there adequate possession of that football? before the ball came out when he hit the ground. And I don't think you're going to have indisputable evidence on that, but we're not the ones who are going to make the call. So we'll see when we come back which way that one goes as they review this. Was it caught? And here's the call. They are they ruled that they were right on the field that it was an incomplete pass so it is a third down and nine third and nine big play Clemson over the middle and incomplete they do not convert as Darlin Stewart moved in and knocked it away both of these teams we've had some calls some that stood some that didn't and all seemingly important you're exactly right and Darian Stewart right there really drove on that football had such good position really could have come up with the interception big stop though by South Carolina big big stop Jimmy Mayners comes out to do the kicking McKinley is back at the 10 yard line for South Carolina Looks like they're coming after this point he's the only one back good blocking coverage and that one angled not enough as that will uh, end up in the end zone and through it. So it'll be brought out to the 20. Time to reveal player number six in IBM's top 25 greatest players in college football. IBM presents the 25 greatest players ever. Number six, Jim Thorpe. Considered one of the greatest athletes in any sport, Thorpe was twice named All-American in football after leading Carlisle to upset wins over Harvard in 1911 and Army in 1912. IBM, getting it done. A legendary player. I mean, Jim Thorpe was one of the great athletes of all time. Multi-sports, tremendous athlete. Brought up, 30. Still up and 36. Wow. We have seen a day where Boyd has done it on the field and now trying to get all the fans into it. A 16 yard gain. And I tell you what, this is a man right here, Corey Boyd. Watch Chancellor the corner come in. Just go for a ride on Corey Boyd. And then he ran 22. Chris Clemens, the safety over. I mean, that is a grown man right there. 13 carries, 52 yards, and they have been hard yards. Boyd in that backfield. The blitz is on. Ran right into him. Oh, is that one called? That one was Courtney Vincent, the middle linebacker, who came screeching through center and had that one lined up. And how about Courtney Vincent, 45, is going to come on this blitz. Now, it's his birthday today. His grandmother is here watching him play for the first time in his career. Good to see this guy step up and make a big play. Big night for Courtney Vincent. Everything right on that one because the center Brown was pulling off to the right side so the middle was wide open. They lost four. Second down. 14 now. Gamecocks offense. That's a hit from behind. And it is intercepted. Another turnover. Darrell Scott ended up with the football coming right into his hands the third South Carolina turnover. Wow. Again you see that protection when protection breaks down Tremaine Billy comes in and jars that football out Darrell Scott 
gets the interception. Boy, Tremaine Billy is three and one against South Carolina, playing for Clemson. He is from Columbia, and he made a big deal out of it this week. I want one final chance to show why I left here and went to Clemson. And uh, right now he's doing just that. Clemson, great field position, first and ten. Straight ahead on the carry goes uh, Davis, and he'll take that just shy of the 25-yard line. That is the first interception, by the way, for that lineman. We just had that one come right to him. Well, how about these defensive linemen from Clemson? Darrell Scott with the interception in pass coverage. Philip Merling, the defensive end, with the big strip a series ago in pass coverage. They've played a big game here. Now Clemson's got to try and convert again. They go up the right side, nowhere to go. Line of scrimmage, maybe a loss. Davis again on the carry. Good work by the interior as Casper Brinkley that defensive end 51 on the hit. Yeah, you have to give credit to this South Carolina defense. You know well documented that Steve Spurrier spent some time on that defensive practice field really upset at their effort. They've given up 99 points in the last two games to Arkansas and Florida. But Gary they've been put in some tough situations tonight and they're hanging in there. And another big play a third down Davis and Spiller both out there third and six after a loss of one on that last play Spiller near side looking into the flats again little comeback may have been caught but it won't matter much because it's right at the line of scrimmage and it was and it will bring up a fourth down and long yardage so Harper trying to get again people coming back towards the middle. Ash was there coming back in, but uh, he fell down. Terrence Ash, his first reception. Now the field goal. Yeah, another great effort by the South Carolina defense. And this Cliff Matthews, number 83 for South Carolina, has already blocked a field goal this year. 45 yarder. Buckholz puts that one up. He's two out of three. He's two out of four. He missed it. It is amazing how South Carolina, the mistakes have piled up for him, and Clemson's not been able to take advantage of it and extend the lead. Not only haven't they extended the lead, it's just a six point difference. ESPN's College Football Primetime is presented by GoDaddy.com, world's number one in dot com domains. Make a dot com name with us. And in part by Clean Exchange, the only electric shaver with a disposable head. Clean Exchange, new from Remington. Fraternity and Sorority Row, 14 classic buildings and decorated up for Christmas a little bit. Great to have you with us. A good one here. South Carolina gets the chance again. Boyd in the backfield, first and 10. Starting in their own territory, going to the flats, far side, 35. And that'll be enough for the first down to the 40 yard line. That is McKinley again on the catch. Tell you what, before I forget, because this game's going to get good here in the fourth quarter, congratulations on that wedding last week. Thank you. And then the subsequent honeymoon out in yeah. Napa. Yes. And I'm still walking, New which is really Mary. amazing when you uh, honeymoon in Napa. <laughs> Uh, okay. <laughs> I was wondering where you were going to go with yeah, that. Yeah, well, I wanted to finish that, because yeah, I could tell right away that was going right to be there, a yeah. problem. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. It is a first down and 10, just shy of the 40. Blake Mitchell is back. Mitchell into the flat side, got tipped. And that is going to be incomplete. Corey Boyd was the uh, intended. Now, I've got to ask you something. Yep. You honeymooned in Napa, California. That's yep. a beautiful setting. Thank you very much. Right? Oh, you want to cool. show the ring again? I just showing the ring. Yep. There, yeah. But isn't it better to be in Columbia, South Carolina, in front of 80,000? I know you got to be politically yeah, correct. I absolutely. Say this. this is a pretty good second phase of that honeymoon. This right? is a great place. And Even they, though you're with me and, and your wife's back in Maine? And that I wasn't going to mention that. <laughs> that. That is a bit of a downer when it comes to that. But they do have good wine here, so I can at least substitute <laughs> and have the wine. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh lordy. It is a second down and ten. Again back. Mitchell scrambled. Still looking. Gotta hang on now. Oh, that's a 15 yard. Whoa. Foul. Driven out of bounds and Scotty Cooper, I believe, number 44, a little too active. And how about Blake Mitchell, Gary? A guy that doesn't run very well. I mean, he was running now. And that's an obvious penalty. 
on Scotty Cooper number 44. But you have to give credit to Blake Mitchell now. Better put that ball away, but he's out there running pretty good. His average yardage rushing per game, minus 10. And I tell you what, the best thing about freshmen is what? They become sophomores. That's right. And that's a freshman linebacker, and we've seen some mistakes on both sides by some young guys. And a big break right there as Scotty Cooper will go to the sideline. Just wants to be left alone for the moment because South Carolina gets that ball now in Clemson territory with a first and ten. Boyd in the backfield. Carolina trying to end their four game losing streak here. If they can get the win and they're going for the TD double coverage up and incomplete at the five yard line. Oof. That was McKinley down there but well covered. And I'll tell you what I mean. Blake Mitchell just lived to snap the ball another play. He's bracketed by Chris Chancellor and Michael Hamlin down the field. And boy, South Carolina has made so many mistakes tonight. They're still in this game, obviously. But Blake settled down a little bit. He's played too many football snaps mm. to do that. South Carolina doesn't know if they need that seventh win in order to make it to a bowl game, but they may. They are six and five coming into this. Clemson at eight and three knows they're going to a bowl, but the selection will change based on a victory or loss here. Quick drop. Into the flats, trying to turn it upfield. 35, a little room, 30. Down the sideline, one man to beat. 15, tight rope walking, and will take it down inside the 10. Beautiful run, McKinley again, 30 yards. And it all started. You talk about seniors playing in big rivalry games. Watch the senior, William Brown, the center, number 71, come out here right there. I mean, look at that block on Vincent. Put the ball away, though, Kenny McKinley. What is he doing, Gary? Holding that football out like he's waving it to the fans. But how about William Brown, the center? That was a great block by the senior. Wow. Eight receptions, 125 yards, and two TDs for Kenny McKinley. It is a first down and goal. Boyd is in the backfield. South Carolina trying to get the lead. Boyd will take it inside the five. That is Ricky Sapp, the defensive end who moves into stopping. And for all that has happened in this game to the negative side of South Carolina, they find themselves here in the fourth quarter with a chance to take the lead. And he has played a major role. 77 receptions this season. Sterling Sharp had the record until tonight. Now every catch he gets adds to the mark. The fans on their feet, 82,000 of them here. It is a second down and goal at the four yard line. Blake Mitchell. Oh boy, out here in the slot. To the near side. Nobody in that backfield looking for Boyd. Open end zone. Touchdown. Touchdown. LaCorn pulls it in, and South Carolina has got a chance to go on top. And how about Kerry Boyd? He lines up here. Watch him come down and stop. And the safety is going to jump on top of him. Watch right here. The safety bites. They throw the football right in behind number 32, Nick Watkins. Excuse me, the linebacker. An amazing come from behind lead as the kick is up. And it is good. And South Carolina. Trying for the first time in 37 years to beat Clemson two years in a row is up by one. So South Carolina has battled back in the last three years. The underdog has been the winner in this game. South Carolina comes in as the underdog in this one. But right now Spurrier's team despite mistakes they've hung in there they have battled the attitude thing he talked about they've shown attitude aggressiveness and state to itiveness in this game and on the other side Tommy Bowden Clemson fans still looking for that dynamic win and you have to wonder if deep in the back of his mind he's not saying uh oh here we go again. We'll see a lot of time left and Clemson has moved the football. A kick coming to the near side is going to be taken at the three yard line. Spiller 
And he will be down shy of the 20 at about the 18 yard line. Let's take a look at our GoDaddy.com game track. Davis and Spiller, 204 yards rushing. Expected, and they have done it well. Both of them having big days. But it's not been enough. McKinley with 125 yards receiving and two TDs, new school record. A couple of bombs included in that. A couple of block punts by Clemson, one of which early in the game would be picked up and returned for a touchdown. The other led to a field goal. A fumble ripped out. Again, Clemson taking possession. Again, could not convert on it as they missed a potential go ahead field goal. But they've got the football again, and they've got plenty of time here in the fourth quarter as they're down by one. Davis on the carry, and he'll bring it up to the 23 yard line. This is what Clemson has done. They've moved the football. Kendrick Ellis in to make the hit. Boy, Kendrick Ellis has had a great night. Big freshman defensive lineman, 97. I mean, this guy looks like he's going to be a player right here. Hasn't run out of gas. That's tough yeah. when you're making your first start. Yeah, he's got five pounds of dreadlocks on him right there, too. <laughs> They've been running right at him. <laughs> five yard gain, second down and five. Cullen Harper will go to the gun for Clemson. Handoff straight ahead and a delay in getting that ball out. And as a result, nowhere to go. Emmanuel Cook coming up from the safety to get Davis. You know, we talk about Clemson last year, seven and one. Lost four of their last five. Had an opportunity last week at home in a game that most people thought they would win against Boston College. You can tell right now, he's feeling it right now. It is the third year that they've been one win shy that they needed to get to the ACC championship game. This time under center, third down. Third down and four. Over the middle, it is caught. A first down up to the 35 yard line. Not bad coverage on that, but a good catch hauled in. Great to have you with us here as the 105th edition of this great matchup is going on at Williams Bryce Stadium here in Columbia, South Carolina. With Stacey Dales, Bob Davey, I'm Gary Thorne, and it is a good one. Clemson came in, maybe expected to kind of run away with this football game in the minds of many football players, fans rather, but that has not happened. They have won eight of the last 10 meetings. They did not win last year. And an injured player down on the field. And that is Carlos Thomas, the cornerback for South Carolina. Yeah, already Captain Munnerlin, their starting corner, out for the rest of the season with a foot injury. I see Carlos Thomas come in there late. I couldn't really identify anything. One of those non contact injuries she was trying to dance over the after the tackle was made it doesn't look good yes yeah, Stony Woodson 36 has played a lot at corner they have a walk on corner number 42 Mike Newton that we thought we may see here tonight but either way you talk it starting two corners not in the football game what looks like for the remainder of this game they had only three healthy cornerbacks to start this game. Yeah, Addison Williams, a true freshman number seven, has played all night. Wow. Now they've got two. This will be a first down and ten. Thompson working from their own 35-yard line out of the shotgun. Big rush put on and a solid tackle made. Davis trying to get away, and Eric Norwood said, uh-uh. Davis is one tough guy to bring down. Norwood is just a tough enough guy to get it done. Watch this quickness by Eric Norwood, the left defensive end. He's right here. And he's just going to jump inside of number 67, Capote, the offensive tackle right there. Boy, that's an athletic defensive end. It is a second down and 10. They use the short side of the field bringing the man in motion this way as well so they end up with all the receivers here in the near side that quick pass into the flats and was that red that will be for a loss that is Darlin Stewart 32 putting the big hit on loss of three Boy, that was a great break on that play by Darian Stewart 
Aaron, Aaron Kelly's out there, just flat misses the block. And a big lick over there in front of South Carolina's bench. Now we get the third down. Third down and long yardage here. Third down and 13 for Clemson. This much maligned South Carolina defense so far in this game has answered the call. Two receivers to the left side. Hyper looking over the middle. It'll be caught, but they gave him that one up to the 40 yard line, but not enough for a first down. Faber made the catch. Emmanuel Cook again came in on the hit. They needed 13, and they got only eight. Yeah, excellent tackle by Emmanuel Cook in the open field. What a and game he, he's having, huh? He, I agree. He's had a great season, Emmanuel Cook, their leading tackler. And you feel like there's a couple mistakes left in this <laughs> game yet. And this game is going to be decided by a big, big mistake. That's just been the pattern all night long. Jimmy Maynard's to do the kicking. Maynard's gets a Ooh. big time boot, a spiral that's taken at the five yard line. McKinley. And he'll be out of bounds at the 12. Mainers with a tremendous punt right there. That's a 55 yard kick and a seven yard return. Now ball possession. South Carolina will try and do it. South Carolina the one point lead fourth quarter 501 left to go trying to upset number 22 Clemson trying to make themselves a short of a bold spot. Maybe anyway, but a victory here would make a huge difference. They get the football at their own 12. Gamecocks 20, still on his feet, and up to the 28-yard line. And if there is a moment for Corey Boyd, this is it. A 16-yard gain. You're right. I mean, it is Corey Boyd time right now. The defensive end sap from Clemson. Knives inside and that creates a big hole right there. But the key right now, Gary, if you're Steve Spurrier in South Carolina, can you play mistake free football for four minutes and 40 seconds and just steal this win right here? And Boyd, a big part of that because obviously they want to keep possession of the football and he's the man who carries it. They don't want to have to go to the air unless they have to. Boyd again turning to the left side. He will bring that one up to the 31 yard line. And let's check in with Stacy. Stacy. Well, Gary, the Carolina offense is moving right now, but you have to wonder how the defense will move without starting cornerback Carlos Thomas. You can see he's got some ice on that knee. They've done some ligament testing on the left knee. He's out for the time being, but it appears, though, guys, that he will unlikely return in this game. It's just a strange. Injury as you saw not really any contact there. He just twisted it on the way down a second down and seven Boyd and Stafford are in the backfield Slotted to the near side Again up that left side second effort to the 35 yard line Antonio Clay moved in to put the hit on and Boyd again on the carry Yeah, obviously this sets up a huge third down because stating the obvious South Carolina's had two punts blocked tonight. They do not want to punt this football right here. So this is a huge call. I would get the ball out to Kenny McKinley in space. Probably one of those wide receiver screens, but also the big tight end Jared Cook, 84 is in the game. Third down and four. McKinley's had eight catches in the game. Boyd's got 73 yards to the ground and 18 carries and a big play right here. Boyd again. They're going to go for it on the ground and will not get it. He'll bring the ball up to the 36 yard line, but they're going to be shy of the first down by a couple of yards. And I know what Steve is anguishing about. Clemson showed a two deep safety look. And you saw Blake Mitchell check to the run because they only had seven guys up there, but then they dropped that safety down as the eighth guy late baited him into running the football. But how about South Carolina punting this football right now with two block punts tonight. South Carolina three for eight third down conversions gonna have to punt this one two out of four have been blocked this time there's time and a good kick it'll be handled at the 24 yard line Spiller sideways and that's it 
good coverage as he is driven out of bounds on the far side but Clemson gets the football back with 209 left to go here in the fourth 42 yard punt. Monday Night Football, ESPN at 8.30. Miami Dolphins take on Ben Roethlisberger and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Question about Joey Porter performing against his former team at Heinz Field. A big night of football. Coverage begins 7 Eastern with Monday Night Countdown. And isn't it appropriate right now yeah. for the South Carolina defense, Tyrone Nix, they've been under siege, gave up 99 points the last two weeks. They have a chance right now to redeem themselves. Colin Hopper, one of the best passers in the nation, will try and move Clemson over the middle. They got it. Big yardage right there up near midfield. Wolf right on the money to Aaron Kelly, and that will be his primary target now. That's going to be good for 26 yards. Boy, just a timing route against three deep zone coverage. Aaron Kelly right down the seam. And when you play three deep coverage like that and don't get a great pass rush, there's a lot of holes in those seams. Kelly's got six catches, 90 yards in this game. 52 yard field goal. Buckholz is the longest he's ever had for Clemson. Looking over the middle, big rush and a sack put on. Back to the 38 yard line, and it's Eric Norwood again. And Clemson that time slid the line the wrong way. Eric Norwood is going to come unblocked. And you see the running back Spiller come over late just because he sees him, but a breakdown, a total breakdown in pass protection that time for Clemson. He leads the team in sacks with five coming into this game. A timeout will be taken by Clemson. Last year's football game, we told you this South Carolina team was able to get it done. 17 points, two Mike Davis TDs, a nine yarder included in that. 31 28 Clemson a final scoring chance a 39 yard field goal missed and the Gamecocks begin a celebration that between these two teams those celebrations last until the next game the next year. <laughs> well you're right and so much riding on this game. I mean Steve Spurrier South Carolina lost four straight games. You don't want to sit here and maybe not even go to a bowl game. And then Clemson on the other side after the big loss last week to Boston College. I mean, a huge must-win game for both coaches. Second down and 17. Clemson with one more timeout. Davis and Spiller are both in there in the backfield for this long yardage. Ball was spotted back up at the 41-yard line. They'll go to the near side trying to free up the backs, and out of bounds immediately goes Spiller and Norwood again, and the chatting goes on. <laughs> he has been fired up this whole season, but Eric Norwood playing a huge part in the South Carolina defense revival the coach was talking about here in this game. Now, third down. Clock running. They've not used that final timeout. Lost a yard. Third down and 18. Third and 18. 82,000 on their feet. Gamecock players along the sideline jumping up and down to keep the fans in it. Cullen Harper will work out of the gun. Harper looking down the middle of the field. It is caught. It is not enough for a first down. Aaron Kelly on the catch but well shy eight or nine yards shy and it's going to bring up a fourth down a great pass protection right there but they force Clemson to throw the ball underneath and Rodney Polk from his linebacker position a short tackle they mark it up at the 46 yard line a fourth down and four Fourth down and four. Seven out of 13. Fourth down conversions for Clemson this year. South Carolina in man-to-man -man coverage now across the field. Harper, the slant is going to be enough for the first down. And will bring that football to the 30. Seven yard line and that's an old experienced guy on a true freshman up there playing bump and run and just too easy Gary to give that big body Aaron Kelly that inside release right there clock is running 12 yard gain they'll mark it at the 34 yard line 
Clock still running here as Hopper gets them out. They want one more play. They gain about 10 more, and they're going to get it over the middle at the 15 yard line. Aaron Kelly again on the catch. And again, it's Aaron Kelly on the true freshman corner. We talked about the injuries at corner, and that's just terrible technique, but he's only a freshman. Now they will stop the clock, spiking it with 17 seconds left to go. Aaron Kelly on this drive, receptions of 26, 12, and 18 yards to set up the possible game winning field goal for Buckles. And we talked about the injuries of this South Carolina defense, particularly this week at corner. Carlos Thomas out of the game, Captain Munnerlin out of the game, and they go right at the freshman Addison Williams with Aaron Kelly who bounces back from last week. Just get the ball in the middle of the field right now if you're Clemson. Call timeout and kick the field goal. Timeout will be taken here by South Carolina. They will use their timeout. Sixteen. If they want to put that second back on up on the clock. There is Buckholtz. Buckholtz today. Two for four. The misses. Wide right on that one. Wide left on that one. And tag on the one a week ago. Now it was a 54 yard field goal to try to win the football game. But if you're Clemson right now, Gary, 17 seconds left, one timeout. Don't get cute. Just take the quarterback and snap it to the quarterback, let him put the ball dead in the middle of the field, call timeout, and kick the ball. Got to give great credit to Colin Harper, the Clemson quarterback. He has really done a great job throughout this game, but particularly here. You can see why he came in 17th in the nation in pass efficiency. He is very good at putting that ball on the money. They want to go one more play here to move it over to the center of the field. He takes a couple of steps to the right. Colin uh, Harper does, and there he is down. The clock will continue to run. They will use their final timeout to stop this clock with just enough time left for the field goal. There you see it being done on the far side. As Tommy Bowden had the official right there. Buck Colts is on his way out. Now, last week, in the big comeback, which was in Death Valley, Matt Ryan and B.C. came away with a victory. But, but there was a chance at the end because Harper did it again. He laid it right there at the two-yard line, thought he had a touchdown, didn't get it. They had a chance for the field goal. Buckholz fell short. It was a 54-yard attempt. And Boston College came away with a 20 to 17 win in that ball game last week. But you know the great thing about athletics, you always get another game. And Aaron Kelly, you mentioned Cullen Harper, but also Aaron Kelly. What a great couple of catches on that last drive. Now you know the old ball coach is going to freeze this kicker with both timeouts. So it's only a question of how long he lets it go before he calls that timeout at the last second. Buck Holtz out there. He's made field goals of 48 and 28. He's missed 35 and 45. This is a 35 yard attempt. 35 yard attempt. And what could be the game winning field goal? No timeouts called. The kick is up. And it is good. And Clemson will come away with a victory as time expires. A 35 yard field goal by Mark Buckholz to win this football game. 23-21. Are you surprised he didn't call the timeouts and try at least to ice the kicker? You probably may, wouldn't have made any difference. You know about what I think happens? It's used so often now that the kicker may be waiting for it, and you may try and mess him up that you way. They have a good point, and a lot of credit to Clemson. A lot of people across this country, including Clemson fans, had to be saying, oh, no, 
Here we go again. And how about Buckholtz, the soccer player, steps up and Clemson wins it on the last play of the game. They are now nine and three. They will have a chance for 10 wins on the year. Clemson's not done that since 17 years ago. They give themselves much better positioning for the bowl that they look forward to with the victory here in this game. And for South Carolina, they are going to have to wait and see if the six wins they picked up are enough to get them to a bowl. And South Carolina, well documented, the injuries on defense, the problems on defense the second half of the season. And in the end, that injury riddled defense, Gary, just could not stop Clemson. Big game today with the man who was down with our own Stacy. But Cullen, take us through your mindset on that last drive. Well, you know, we knew we just needed three points, so we just had to give our kicker a position to, to make a kick. And, you know, Aaron Kelly made some great plays, and kicker made a great kick, and I'm just so proud of our guys right now. It's awesome. This is a huge response from that BC loss last Saturday. What's your reflection on your team's response? Oh, you know, I'm just, you know, we're just resilient. We we deal with adversity so well. That's kind of been the trademark of this team is, you know, we've, we've had some ups and we've had some downs, and we had not let the downs keep us down. We bounced back, and I'm just so proud of them. This is your first year starting for this team in this rivalry setting what does this mean for your program oh it means a lot you know we, we wanted to make sure we finished this year the way we we knew we should and we, you know we played a great game and South Carolina played a great game and I'm just you know we're so excited right now all right thanks a lot Colin congratulations Gary Colin Harper he led the, the drive from their own 22 with four passes that were taken by Aaron Kelly a 68 yard drive that ended up with a game winning field goal right there and Clemson gets it on the final play of the game up next ESPN 2 college football scoreboard for more on this one we'll be along on ESPN news as well in just a moment to wrap it up this has been a presentation of ESPN the worldwide leader in sports for Bob Davies Stacey Dales and all of our crew I'm Gary Thorne thanks everybody from Columbia enjoy the rest of your Thanksgiving weekend now Stan and Jesse.